Why is student evangelism important? Well, personally, it's important to me because I saw something when I was at university in the 1990s, which I know is a long time ago, but I saw something that I just can't unsee. I saw something of the possibility and it was just my story. We lived in such close proximity to each other as students. I played ultimate frisbee because I went to Loughborough Uni and if you're gonna play a mainstream sport, you have to be really good at it and I've never been great at any sport. So I thought, I'll play ultimate frisbee and I got quite good at that and I loved it and we played it six times a week. There was a whole group of us who were doing loads and loads of ultimate frisbee and because of that there was five of us who loved Jesus so we started meeting as a small group and we thought well it's open to anyone so we invite these guys to five of them start coming along who are not Christians we had really good small group chats because we were living you, they could see our lives they could see if we were hypocrite, hypocritical or anything like that so uh, two of them became Christians over that time and I'm now married to one of those people so that went well um, but look, there's three main reasons I want to share with you that are why student evangelism is crucial. The first one is opportunity. It's a 99% mission field. So many students have never been to church and they don't know Jesus as their personal Lord and Saviour. It's a huge opportunity. Imagine if Jesus says he would leave the 99 sheep in the fold who are rescued already and he would go across the hillside to rescue the one lost sheep. He's totally up for doing that if there's one sheep that is saved and 99 who are lost on the student landscape. He's in for that mission and so he's already doing it in fact and so he invites us to go in that huge opportunity to join with him. There's 2.3 million students in the UK. It's a huge number of people and they've popped up all over the place. There's halls of residence that are appearing very close to maybe your church. And so the question is, how do we adapt and, and evolve so that we are able to reach these people that are part of this massive opportunity? They are, uh, like I said, there's a, this big opportunity with them living closely to each other. A story would be a friend of mine called Hugh. He was at our church a few years ago and he got baptised and he invited along his friend Ellie. She came to the baptism service and thought, there's something brilliant about this church. They carry something that I haven't got. So she starts coming along regularly meets Jesus, and then she gets baptised. So she invites along her mate Ryan to the baptism. Ryan thinks, there's something about this. These guys have really got something. He starts coming along, he loved the worship particularly, I remember that. And then he gave his life to Jesus and he gets baptised. That's because they lived in close proximity with each other. These three people just shared lives together. So, opportunity. The second thing is openness. Students today are so open spiritually. They're open to new experiences of all kind while at university. They haven't yet formed really what their worldview is gonna be and how they're gonna live. They're, they are still becoming who they are gonna be. So there's a massive openness and spiritually they want to know about God. They're like switched on to that. They're not atheists in general. There's hardly any atheists. There's quite a few agnostics, but that's because it's confusing nowadays, isn't it? The world is a confusing place. So people aren't sure, but we're not really seeing the atheism that Richard Dawkins used to speak about. What we are seeing is people who are spiritually interested. In fact, 75% of people say that they would, students would come to church if a friend invited them, but no one's ever invited them. One of our friends, uh, Daniela, she just recently had somebody chat to her in the lecture and, and say, can I chat to you at the end? And she said, I've been spiritually open my whole life. I've tried all sorts of stuff. We've done tarot cards when I was growing up. And uh, I actually just feel none of it's fulfilled me and I want to try a local church. Can I come to your church? And Daniela's like, yes. So there's such an openness that you see in the student generation. There was another girl called Megan that was in the lockdown that we had in the COVID years. She uh, was watching, uh, I think she was actually scrolling Instagram, and she saw that a friend of hers was sharing on the local church's Instagram page. And so her friend, a friend had said, I'm doing this this morning. So she watched it, and it was a devotional thing where she shared sort of 10 minutes from a gospel story saying, this is um, something that I've found inspiring or something from the Bible. And so her mate watches it and thinks, I've never encountered that kind of love that she's talking about and I want it so she thought I want to become a Christian how do I do that and so she did what everyone would do uh, and she googled it and found something on Amazon about what something to read so she orders it off Amazon gives her life to Jesus then she's like what do I do next so she googles it finds another resource on Amazon 
orders that and reads that. Then she goes to the church at that stage and says, this is what I've been doing. I've become a Christian. I've been reading a load of discipleship stuff. Am I doing okay? Is that what I should be doing? And they're like, you're doing amazingly well. And they've helped her grow in her discipleship ever since. But there's such openness in the spiritual gen- generation, in the, sp- in the student generation. They're so open. So we need to remember that. The third thing is influence. Students of today are going to form tomorrow's society, whether we like it or not. They will shape the world that we end up living in, that our kids grow up living in. So the question is, are they going to do that with Jesus at the centre of who they are or not? It's a great opportunity for us to share with those who are going to influence the, 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 the tomorrow's world kind of thing. So let's do that. The, the, another interesting thing on that is that people are coming from all around the world to study in this country. So not just people who've grown up in the UK, but people who, who grow up all over the world come and study here as international students. In fact, more of the, the world's heads of state, people who are presidents and prime ministers and all the other things like that, more of those people came to study in the UK than any other country in the world. So there's something very strategic in terms of world revival about reaching the students that come to study in the UK. So those are my things. Opportunity. There's a massive opportunity out there. There's huge openness in the student generation and they're going to have a massive influence on tomorrow. So we need to go and reach students. And finally, just a cheeky little final one. I think it's what Jesus did. He reached people who are of student age and called them to be his disciples. He got them together and discipled them as a group. And then as he ascended to heaven, he gave them the riskiest, it was such a risky strategy to say, you go and make disciples of all nations. I'll be with you to the end of the age, but you go and do it. And that's how the church was born. It's an incredibly high risk strategy, but it seems to have worked okay. So the invitation from Jesus is to join in in going and reaching students with the gospel.